Hi, welcome back to Greenstone Island. So in this video, I'm going to be doing some painting. This morning, I'm going to be painting this house sign. I did a, an hour or so last night, just over, before I went home on this sign. Actually, I carved this sign on the video. I'll stick a link in the description if you want to see me carve it. Um, and I started painting it and left it, went home, and then in the night, uh, early hours in the morning, somebody sent me a message saying, can I uh, ask you about your painting technique, how you go about it, what paint you use, how you seal the stone after. And I've had this question a few times over the, um, the last 12 months and I've always planned on doing a more in-depth video about painting. I thought, well, we're halfway through, we may as well do it now. So I'm going to show you the paint I use, how I mix it up, um, the seal I use afterwards, the paintbrushes I use, and just show you my technique to painting the house signs. So I'll bring you a little bit closer and I'll show you me mixing my paint. So the paint I'm going to be using is um, Hammerite, Hammerite Black on this side. So I've tried all different paints over the years. I've tried water-based uh, water paints, I've tried enamel paints, I've tried all different paints. And I like Hammerite, but it's a little bit too thick as the way it is. So I like to drop a little bit of Hammerite finish, only a tiny, tiny little bit of Hammerite finish. This stuff is strong, like you need a tiny little bit. It smells like um, pear drops. It smells lovely, but you don't want too much of it in the room with you at once. So we use a tiny little bit of this. I mean. You can hear yeah, there's a lot in there, and I've had that can, what, seven years, eight years now? Um, I've tested this. I've not just picked this paint and thought, oh, that one I'll do. I've tested it, so I've had it, I've painted with this sign, all different paints in a row on a house sign. I carved the number eight uh, four times, used four different types of paint, had it sat outside with a, um, in all weathers, I had it sat in the pond for a couple of weeks. We used a scrubbing brush on it, we used the jet wash to a certain point, we obviously were stripping it away to a certain point to see which one worked the best. And I like this one, I think it, it works really well. Other people will have other paints they prefer and they like using this one for me, just works well and I'm happy with it. So the first thing you need to do is decant some into a pot. This is just a um, an old coffee cup, a brand new coffee cup actually, but an old Christmas one um, I got from the local petrol station. I'm not going to show you me decant it into the pot because that uh, can always be a little bit messy. But as I bring the camera close, you can see I've got, well, I don't know what, 10 mils worth of paint in the bottom of there. And I'm going to drop a little bit of hammerite thinners in there. So I'll bring the camera up now and show you me doing the hammerite finish. Regarding the paintbrushes, uh, again, I've tried all different types. Just use throwaway paintbrushes. So these, I buy a set of three from the local craft shops. Set of four, actually, from the local craft shops. I mean, they cost three pounds. That's where the three came from. Um, you get different sizes. They're good, they're nice. You get like a half inch, a number six, two number sixes, actually, and a number three. Um, and I always keep a, an old one for mixing the paint. They're really nice to use. They brush really well, and they're not massively expensive, so you can throw them away at the end. Um, you get a couple of signs out of a packet, depending on the size of the sign, obviously, and how rough the stone is. Yep, so what I'll do, I'll mix that up now, um, show you me doing that, and then we'll get a bit on the uh, on the sign. Like I say, you only need a, a very small amount. Put that in. Mix it round with the old brush. So if you've worked with hammer out before, you'll know it's quite gloopy and quite thick. But that little bit of thinners in there makes it really nice to to paint on. So that's ready to go. So I've started off by getting some of the paint worked into the brush. On the thicker parts of the uh, the letters, just get your brush working well. When they're new out of the packet, I like to just get them working in. So when I'm going to work the paint into the corners of this S here, I'm going to paint the paintbrush. What I do, I just pinch it. So it fans the paintbrush out. Maybe you can see it on the camera. So it just fans the paintbrush out there. Makes it nice and wide and slim. Dab a little bit of paint on, and then you can just use that fan effect just to paint right into the uh, right into the corners. Obviously, different fonts, 
different techniques with a paintbrush but this one this technique works really well so I'll do the same up here if you fan on your brush is not fanned anymore just do the same thing again just pinch it a bit of pressure on it cleans it off as well and then uh, just fans back out nicely I like having these deep coffee cups when I'm painting so you can dab your paint off on the inside of them when they're a little bit I used to use them a little bit to shallower but these are nice because it means the inside of your your coffee cup you can dab it off on the walls instead of it too close to the rim so you're not getting paint on your gloves or if you're not wearing gloves on your hand smudging it on the side So what I'll do now, I'll crack on with a couple more letters, I'll um, what, keep the camera rolling so you can see me and then as we get to this F in a minute or this A maybe, with the wider parts I'll bring you a little bit closer and show you how I'm filling in the bigger areas. So now I'm going to paint the um, the F. I'm trying to think of a word what I'd use for this technique of painting. I suppose it's a bit like pushing and pulling. Yeah, starting off at the bottom in the bottom of the in the V and building up your layers, well, building up your paint until you get towards the top. One other tip I'd give you when doing this, I had to make sure the uh, stone is really really clean. So. When it's in my workshop, that's, I use the uh, Henry Hoover without a nozzle on the end, so it's just a plastic, so you don't scratch the stone, just the uh, the end of it, just to hoover out any corners. I give it all the good brush down first. Um, I wash it all, scrub it all, and then give it a good brush down, and then get the Henry Hoover in the corners, which makes sure there's no dust sat in the corners, so it's not collecting on your paintbrush. It's um, not causing any problems, it's not sat, the paint's not sat on top of it, so over time the weather's going to get underneath it, so you're going to get patches what are going to get exposed, so you're going to have to clean the stone again. It just makes it all around a better job, neater job, and it's good practice. Yeah, so that's kind of like a, a push-pull method with a paintbrush. Again, I'm just dabbing the paintbrush in, keeping it working on the inside of the pot keeping the paintbrush nice don't be afraid to swap paintbrushes if you want to, this one's okay at the minute but it's quite abrasive the stone when you're pulling against it with the paint so all of a sudden it's um, gone from being good to you're really battling against it so don't be afraid, the cheap paintbrushes like I said at the beginning, the throwaway paintbrushes, you want it so you're not having to battle with it so if you want to get rid of it get rid of it you see on the end there I don't know if you can just see it it's just let me get it in focus it's just starting to curl on the end so we're nearly ready for swapping
So what I'll do now, I'll finish this up. I'll bring the camera back on right as we get into the end so you can see it's uh, finished painting. So it's all done. And then we're going to leave it for a little bit and then we're going to put some seal on. So yeah, I'll get painting and then um, I'll see you in a minute. So you just see me put the stone seal on. I left that uh, paint overnight to dry and I've put the stone seal on this morning. So that stone seal has been on like now maybe an hour now, an hour and 20 minutes. It's just like dark in places, it's it's tacky to touch here and there, but the, it's getting there, it's drying out well. It's um, the stone seal I've used there is a Thompson's weather seal. We use a few different Thompson seals, I think we use three or four in total and a few different seals like we use the uh, Linafin, that the Australian Linafin, that's really good. Um, we use a KCS 1000 on some products and the Thompsons. Um, and then we've used PVA before as well, that works really well. It's a cheap way of doing it if you're on a budget. But I really like using this Thompson seal on these signs, especially with this Derbyshire gridstone. It brings out that more chocolatey colour to stone, just darkens it slightly. Uh, and like I say, we've tested it. Um, in all sorts of weather conditions as well to make sure it's good and also signs of may go all around the world so we've got some of the coldest places and then we've got some of the warmest uh, we've got some in Senegal which is really warm and the dust blowing against them and they last really well we've got some in California we've got some in Texas we've got some in Ireland Scotland uh, Australia so there's plenty all over the world and we've had no problems at all in the last what seven years using it doing it this way so yeah, if I would recommend the Thompson's weather seal on top of the Hammerite paint, if you're going to paint a, uh, your own house sign. Um, I'm actually off, off out now, so that's why I've got to change the clothes on. I've got the Peak Park clothes on, Peak Park hoodie, uh, flea, sorry, and the t-shirt. I'm off teaching a stone carving course now for the Peak Park. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope I've managed to teach you something. If you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch. Please hit the subscribe button, it really helps out with making future videos and I'll see you all next time.